and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something I wanted to do um, for this stream, being being my two year anniversary. Uh, I wanted to do like a few stream awards for the past year. So we're gonna we're gonna just do some stream awards. Oh, I actually didn't add my music. That's fine. We're good. Um, so I want to just look back a little bit on the year that was in streaming, and uh, so figure we can do that now. And then we'll uh, we'll take a quick break, have some pizza, and then come back and play some of the more watch doggies. So the first thing I want to do is um, we have had a bunch of fun clips on this stream. Um, and I want to take a little look back at some of my favorite ones that you all have clipped. And we're going to play that right now. Uh, but I do like, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I like a d decent amount of nuts. Nobody clipped that. Right? Like, my driver, my my passengers are jerks. Like, oh my god. I saved this guy's robot one time, and he was like, uh, uh, you should be going faster. Uh, you shouldn't have blown up that sewer. Uh, you shouldn't have killed that pedestrian. Uh, like, I got you where you needed to be. I saved your robot. I don't know what your problem is. Uh. All right. We should be fine. This game, this game has big enough polygons. We can do this. Uh, let me just do it from here. Set a five minute timer. All right. <laughs> that wasn't the glasses. That was. I didn't realize where I was on the screen. Do you so, um, we, <laughs> it's a holiday tree. It's a festivus for the rest of us. Could be, could be for anything. There could be fireworks on that. Don't know that I like this. <gasps> I think he was offering me something. So I, I can... Over 300, okay. Okay. Okay, I can also buy these, okay. Yeah, I love these. Oh, and I can just keep buying them. Okay, but I don't have enough money. All right. All right. Weird dead fox thing. Thank you for not killing me. Uh, Mothu, you have a son now. You cannot go hunting every day. The tides of your life have changed. You must change the pattern. You will come to the Temple of the Waves tomorrow with your family. Priestess Ithula. Degawali. I do not think it is... Uh, isn't that the the name of the street where all the shops are in Harry Potter? I thought... I think so. Um, I do not think it is wise for you to go after this Naga cult. The Pelangi are fools and easily led by false words, but this is not our concern. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Oh my god. That was hilarious. Oh no. So 
so yeah those those were our clips of the year uh they were a bunch of fun a lot of fun memories um but i will say one one particular clip really really stood out among the rest of them when i was uh when i was going back through them on twitch and so i do have an actual clip of the year award winner we are going to play it now it was clipped by a one zephyr foxworth it was while we were playing star wars jedi fallen order and here it is <gasps> he, he killed himself what a loser! What an absolute loser! <laughs> so, that was our clip of the year. Uh, that, that spider apparently had enough of us trying to lame it out like it was cross and and decided to just go ahead and kill itself. So that was it. That was a lot of fun. That was such a good- oh, it was such a good clip, Cosmic. Amazing. So that was that was our clip of the year award winner. Um, thank you again. Yes, Zephyr. Thank you for clipping that and uh, allowing that to be it. All right. So now we are going to do our other set of awards. Uh, we are going to do our uh, games of the year. So I'm going to tell you my top three games I played on stream this past year. So we are going to start with number three. And that was we just saw a clip from it. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, this game was amazing. As someone who doesn't even really care that much about the Star Wars brand, I had so much fun with it. Uh, even just having like the base knowledge of, of what happened uh, for Cal Kestis and the rest of the Jedi in that time period between like episode three and episode four. The story stood so much on its own. I really appreciated that. It was kind of my first trek into like 3D Dark Souls type games as well. So there was like this big learning curve, but the graphics were amazing. The combat, once I got it down, was really fluid. The force powers were really cool. The things you got to do with the lifesaver were awesome. The worlds were really varied and the characters were really great. I wish they didn't show Darth Vader and you didn't have to fight him at the end. That was like the one thing I didn't want. But other than that, game was amazing. I, I loved it. I'm so happy they're making a sequel. I am almost positive we're going to be playing it on this stream when it does come out. Um, but yeah, if you get a chance, play Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It is a fantastic game and a great introduction also into, hey, would I like to play Dark Souls? Would that kind of combat interest me? Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is baby's first Souls game for a reason. It has actual difficulty sliders, so you can take it down if you want to. Something I really appreciated. So that was game number three. Now we're going to go to our second place game. And it was Ruin King, a League of Legends story. Now, if I had never played Dark Souls types games before and like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, this game had an even taller task because I don't like turn based RPGs like at all. All the smut. No, it was not the smut. It was the great writing, the wonderful little lore tidbits filled out, which some of them were smut, but that's OK. Um, the fun combat system, the way that battles for a lot of the game actually felt like a puzzle that you really had to figure out what the best method of attack was. I really appreciate that. I appreciate that it wasn't a grind fest to the point where the game if you even got like a little over level for an area would be like, no, you don't get experience points anymore. You're done. Move on. Move. Keep playing the game. And as someone that doesn't want to grind, didn't want to do all that. I really appreciated that. I always felt very well leveled for the area I was in. The the combinations of characters you could have were really cool. Pike was a little OP, but that's fine. Braum was also kind of OP in a different way, I guess. Um, but the story was good. It was a little cliche, but I mean, especially as someone who went through leagues trying to tell of the, the ruination and introduction of Viego, this way was so much better. The writers did a fantastic job really bringing League of Legends characters into this this place and bringing out their personality. 
I really appreciated that. The voice acting, getting the actual voice actors was just a, an absolute must, and they all nailed it. There's not a whole lot else I can say about this game. There was a few bugs that those might have kind of kept it from being number one. There was like a few really bad bugs in that game. But other than that, if you're an RPG fan, you know, go try this game. Uh, Airship Syndicate also made Battle Chasers, which was also fantastic. So go check those games out. They're really, really good. Food is here going down to get it. Do you want me to bring it to the second floor and I'll play it for you? Uh, yes, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and so with that, uh, I also wanted to give a shout out to a couple of indie games that didn't make the top three, uh, but I did want to shout out at least. Uh, one of them was Omno. Uh, Omno was a fantastic puzzle platformer game in 3D made essentially by one person, which is kind of going to be a theme for some of this, these next few games. Um, a fun, like basic, but still heartwarming story where you and your little squirrel flying friend, like go around solving puzzles and bringing light and going on this journey and really figuring out what what kind of life is all about in a way. The puzzles were really intelligent, not overly complicated. The graphics are really good. Again, for one person, they use a very minimalistic art style to really convey the different worlds. The powers you get in that game, for the most part, were really cool. And it's it's short, so you can knock it out in a day or two. I think Omno, if you can find it for cheap, a really good game. Also, want to give a shout out to Donut County. Uh, some of the best writing in a game I've seen this year hilarious you get to play as a as a raccoon essentially who's just putting holes and dropping people in them funny as all get out again it's very basic puzzling but it's just in service of hearing more of the amazing dialogue and written comments uh it's short uh the ending is one of the best ending sequences i've ever seen in a video game they manage to actually tie all the the uh, sort of controls and and puzzle elements you find throughout the game into one cohesive package at the end. It's fantastic. Go play Donut County. It's wonderful. And then lastly, a game we just actually played a little bit ago. Stray. Uh, Stray nails being a cat, man. Just better than just about anything else. Um, that feeling of being a cat was awesome but it couldn't carry like a 10 to 15 hour game unless the game was actually good. And the game was really good. Uh, the chase sequences were pretty fun. The puzzle sequences were good. The, the characters you meet along the way were really intriguing. The world itself was really intriguing. Uh, we had uh, Origami Girl come in earlier and say she wanted a sequel. I agree with her. Give us a sequel. That cat was awesome. Uh, and it's another story that kind of hits you right in the feels at the end. Uh, absolute blast. Go play straight if you can. OK, so before we get to the number one game, I want to talk about a game that couldn't be the number one game, and that's because of the criteria I used. The criteria I used for games that we picked for this year were games I started after my last stream anniversary. This game was being played as we were having our stream anniversary, so it couldn't count for this year but I'd be remiss if I didn't say anything about it. And that game is Control. Control is a phenomenal experience. One of the best gaming experiences I've ever had. Remedy absolutely knocked it out of the park. They somehow were able to take the setting of a boring government office building and made it terrifying and intriguing and hilariously wonderful. The dialogue, again, throughout the place and the written notes you find is great. The acting is really well done. The, the slide projector videos are great. The powers you get are wonderful. You really, really feel like you become OP towards the end of that game. And it is so much fun. Tying it into the world of Alan Wake at the end with the, the DLC packs was very, very fun. I just I had a, bl a blast with that game. The Ashtray Maze is a sequence in gaming that is going to stick with me probably forever. It was such a very, very, very good game. And the reason I really wanted to bring it up was because in a lot of ways, it's responsible for our actual game of the year. Because before I played Control, I was really worried. I am terrible 
at third person shooters, as you've seen in Watch Dogs. It's the reason we play stealthy in Watch Dogs, because I suck at third person shooters. And so before I play Control, I was like, oh, God, this could be stream poison. I could be terrible at this. I, I this, this could be so bad. But we got pretty good at it, like not great, still bad, but good enough to get through the game. And that really gave me the confidence to try and branch out from games I didn't think I'd be good at. It's why we played Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, because I thought I'd be terrible at Souls-like games, and we made it through there. It's why we played Ruin King, because I thought I would be terrible at turn-based RPGs, and that was a lot of fun. And man, it's also why we played our game of the year at the end of the day. And our game of the year was Tunic. If you've been in this stream for any length of time over the past, I don't know, five months, you've probably heard me gush about this game. I don't know that I've ever had a gaming experience like the second half of Tunic. To go from what you think is a Zelda clone with a cute little fox going around, beating monsters, doing some light puzzle solving, and then all of a sudden, no, it's this incredibly involved puzzle game where you can actually decipher the language. Unbelievable, man. Using the instruction manual first as this cute little device just to kind of guide you along your path and then to realize, oh no, the instruction manual is a key part of figuring out the puzzles, sometimes directly leading to puzzles themselves. The twists, the turns, the the moment at the end when we found the website. If you remember that. What a moment to actually finally solve that puzzle. And I think the thing that really puts Tunic over the top for me and made it my game of the year was not the amazing controls, not the great combat, not the incredibly involved puzzles that actually made me bring out a pen and paper. No. The thing that made Tunic the game of the year was that unlike every other game I've played, Tunic felt made for streaming. I could have had fun playing Ruin King if I had just played it by myself. I could have had fun playing Control if I had just played it by myself. Jedi Fallen Order, Donut County, Omno, all these games I could have had fun playing by myself. To be able to play Tunic and have chat interact and try to solve the puzzles along with me and help me out and, and have that community experience, that's what Twitch is kind of all about. And having that community, having you all out there be part of the solving of the puzzles, that made everything worth it. Just so much fun. So that is why, above all else, Tunic was my streaming game of the year. It's not going to win many awards for game of the year, Elden Ring probably locked that up about six months ago. But man, Tunic is an experience unlike any other. Play it. Just play it. It's awesome. All right. So that is our awards. Um, going to catch up a little bit on check here. Um, terrible is funny. Still can't wait for to get sequel alt and delete. I've heard there's going to be a control sequel. I really hope there is. I hope there is, man. It was great. Uh, would you be interested in Slate Spire or Across the Obelisk? I don't know. Uh, I card based games have really have a really weird thing with me. I might give it a try at some point, but I I don't know. I've never been good at card based games. Um, deck building. Deck building has always been really weird to me. Like I've tried Magic and Legends of Runeterra and they're they're fun. But like deck building just seems. Like I get to the feeling that I like want to look up a guide. Just to build a meta deck and that doesn't feel fun to me. It's it's actually why I bounced off of Runeterra because Runeterra seemed awesome. And the fact that you can essentially play Runeterra for free without really having to pay anything like magic. Uh, really felt cool, but man. Yeah, maybe I'll try it one day. Maybe we'll try it one day when we're uh, when we got a little downtime in our stream. So alternately, I haven't phase deck building, but mainly Arkham style combat. Interesting. I actually think I saw that game 
when I was looking around for games to play today. So maybe we'll check one of those out one day. Maybe maybe we'll, we'll grab a list of some games and uh, we'll try those out when we have another downtime in our stream. All right, but that is going to do it for our awards. Um, so I think with that, uh, we are going to take a break. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I'm going to go grab some food. Uh, so this is going to be a probably a longer break, maybe like 20 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, just get a little bite to eat. And I'll be back. We'll play some more Watch Dogs 2. Uh, and we're only about halfway through the stream, so we still got a long ways to go. But stick with us here. Uh, also, if you guys want to just lurk for a little bit, have fun. And uh, we'll be back in just a little while.